Hey, what is up? It's Steve. I hope you're having an amazing day. This is a two-part video series for people that own the Boss RC600 Loop Station, or maybe you're thinking about getting one, or you just like this kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to cover a couple known bugs or issues that people are having and frustrated with and try to provide some solutions. I'm going to give some credit where credit's due as well. Um, the two uh, items are, one, being able to create a multi-part song and move from like a verse and a chorus and back to the verse and do it reliably right on the one beat every time. Um, there's a really cool solution for that. I think I got everything there and I'm going to show it off on that screen right there that start right I'm going to go deep dive into all the settings and really do it very clearly and hopefully um, uh, effectively and then um, the second video is about uh, a different length of the verses and chorus so let's say you've got a, a, a an eight bar chorus and a nine bar um, sorry an eight bar verse and a nine bar chorus things can get wonky. And as a performing musician, if you're out in front of a crowd, you know, you need to be able to confidently execute commands and, and make things happen the way that you expect them to, or you're going to get embarrassed. And so that's not good. So I'm going to give it uh, my best shot. Um, also, uh, in this video, I'm going to do an original little jam, nothing uh, special here uh, to demo it here. In the second video, though, I'm going to do The Joker by Steve Miller and Us and Them by Pink Floyd. Those, those both came recommended um, by some people. I was trying to find some examples of songs that had those multiple different links right there. So speaking of those uh, people here, uh, let me go on this um, uh, iPad, and I want to show you um, a really um, cool group here. This is the Facebook Boss RC600 Loop Station group. There's a ton of experts there, and one of the people who um, was on there, his name's Dino. You can see his post right there. And Dino, um, he made a post here where he uh, explained this uh, secret method or thing, thing that he had figured out, which uses uh, all stop, all start, a couple of assigns in the Boss RC600, and um, some changes to the pedal modes. And it sort of blew my mind, and a bunch of people started talking about it. Um, and, you know, got uh, uh, some good conversation going. So I'm going to do uh, my best to cover that here in this little start right uh, thing up there at the top, and um, we'll see how I do. Uh, before we get going here, as I, uh, as I always say, grab some headphones or earbuds. I do stuff in stereo. Um, I got a Taylor GS Mini here. And I got a keyboard here. I control most of my stuff uh, with a keyboard. This is a, a synth. Ready? So that's cool, and I can control uh, levels, track levels. I got these faders up here uh, set as um, as uh, controls for the 600. All right, so this is track 15. It's called Start Right. Uh, just named it uh, to show what we're doing here. And um, you don't really need to pay too much uh, attention to that screen now, uh, but I just thought I'd show you the lay of the land. Um, down here at the bottom, though, let me show you my uh, my pedals. So. I have this not set up the way it comes out of the box from Boss. I have it set up with track one, track two, and track three. So those are instant records for track one, two, and three. In this little segment of the video, we're not going to use track one at all. I'm just going to record a verse on track two and a chorus on track three. I'll come back to the rest of these buttons later. And in fact, this six button over here is not in use the whole video. So um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a four bar verse on track two, four bar chorus on track three. I'm gonna just do them both back to back and then I'm gonna come back to track one. This may not be absolute perfect timing. Uh, this purpose of this video isn't to show, you know, exactly the perfect timing loop, it, it, but you, I'm gonna demonstrate the problem that people are having. Um, also one note, if you're familiar with the 600, I'm using instant uh, track changes on track two and three. So I gotta hit my foot right at the right time if it's a little off time, it's because that's what I'm using for the purpose of this demo. Usually I use the loop end feature, which is great. So, um, in fact, maybe I should, but let's give it a shot. I 
I'll turn those down. Um, I'm not using a rhythm track for this. I'm gonna try to use a rhythm in a second and show you what happens if you use like a click track or whatever. But um, look at the green orb. One, two, three, we got, we got a different view, ready? I got that view. So that green orb at the bottom, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. So when it hits the bottom, that's the one count, and right here, when it hits the top, that's the three count. The problem happens is when you move interchangeably between the verse and chorus, and you think you're gonna end up at the one count, you end up at the three count, um, at least in this example. Let me turn um, the volume up. I'm gonna solo a little bit and show you an example of how things go well, and then I'll stop and we'll show you how things go badly. So that was pretty good, and you know, it's okay. That showed if I know where I am and I'm ready to go from the verse to chorus, verse to chorus, I'm in good shape. But let's say, you know, you're, you're on YouTube and you're doing a demo and you sort of lose track. Is this A chord right here, the one or the three? Or maybe you're in, in front of a crowd or a gig and you're talking and you're like, Man, I don't know if that's the one or the three, unless you've been doing all the math in your head or looking down at the thing, which you could, you know, uh, when you're ready to go into the solo or the chorus, you could, you could, um, you know, take a look down. It's probably smart to do, but let's just say you don't and you're ready to go into the chorus whenever you want to, you know, and um, that note right there, right there is a great note that goes with the, that C minor chord. It does not go as well, I mean, you can make it work with the B minor. So in other words, when I go to this note, I expect it to match very nicely with the C minor, which is on the one beat, not the B minor, which is on the three beat. So here we go. I'm going to go into the solo purposefully when that green orb hits the top, okay? Hear that? That's when the chorus starts right there on that C minor. So let me give you an example of good again. In fact, that showed you right there. I clicked um, back to the verse. Uh, let me go to this view. There you go. So look at the the second track is about to hit the bottom. And if I go now, the third track started in the middle. See that? So let me show you good again, ready? This is an example of a good one. So that was good. Now I'm gonna show you bad. I'm gonna purposely go again. As if we're talking, I'm gonna say, hey, let's go to the solo, right? And then I sorta don't know where I am. So I think you see, you know, the crux of the problem, which is you you wanna be able to go and reliably do it, uh, get, get from point to point, point A to point B. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to delete everything. Um, go to that view real quick. I'm gonna delete everything, and I'm gonna show you uh, Dino's secret. The way I've got this set up um, is, again, uh, track one, track two, track three. Those are instant records. Um, 
it's this stuff, which is the magic four and five, not, uh, I don't even use that six one. So again, Dino, his solution, uh, was to go into the, uh, settings and use the foot, sw the foot switches, the controls of the modes and change the pedals, what the pedals do. So this one right here, um, used to be record the fourth track. Now it's an all start, all stop. Same thing with this one. So these aren't tracks four and five anymore. These are all start, all stop. Then um, there are two different assigns for the fourth pedal and another two for the fifth pedal. And what they do is um, they, you, you could use just one assign each if you weren't doing a percussion track. But in Dino's example, he used a rhythm track. Um, my, my setup is slightly different than his. If you watch his video, his buttons are in different places, but I'm just going to show you how I did it. I have this set up to do a percussion track on track one, um, either, you know, me doing that kind of stuff, or, um, uh, you could use the rhythm track built into the, the boss. I'll show that in a second. Hopefully it'll go well. Um, so he, by doing that, even though my other example only had verse chorus with an acoustic guitar in this next round, I'm going to put a little percussion uh, to it. You don't have to do that. I think what you could do is not use one of the assigns I'm about to tell you about and just don't worry about it if you're not using rhythm. But in, in his example, he used rhythm. I'm trying to duplicate his example. So here's what we got. Again, four and five are all start, all stop. That's through the pedal mode settings. But the the two assigns on track four, one starts track one, uh, and it starts track two, which would be keep the percussion going and keep the verse going. The fifth one starts track one, which is the percussion and or rhythm, and it starts track three, um, and which is the chorus. In other words, instead of using these two buttons, two and three, to switch from the verse chorus, what I'm doing is right after recording uh, the verse on two and the chorus on three, I'm not going back and forth there. From then on, I only exclusively use the fourth pedal to go to the verse and start up the verse and the and the drums, um, and then uh, or percussion, and when I hit this fifth button to go to the chorus and uh, the percussion um, instantly, and they, they go instantly. I'm talking instantly, and I, you can actually do some cool stuff. You can change around your chord structures, so just watch this. Let me see if I can get it right. Um, again, this is the um, start right, 15th track, and I tell you what, maybe I'll go to that view right there. Here we go. All right. Uh, if I screw it up, I'm just going to hit erase and try it again because this is pretty complicated and my mind is so focused on explaining it all that sometimes I forget to play the music right. So forgive me. Here we go. I'm going to do percussion track on track one. Let me think about this. I'm going to do very simple. Ready? That stunk. Let's... Uh, Okay, I laid down a percussion track right there, and here's what I'm going to do. Four bar on track two, four bar on track three, and then my next click is going to be four, and that's the verse. And when I'm ready to go to the chorus, I can do it any time on five. I can go back to the verse on four, and I can go back to the chorus whenever I want to. I can even double up the chorus or interrupt my chorus. Um, in a creative way. So I'll show you that in a second. Let me see if I can nail it. One, two, three, four. Should all be locked in. Let's go to the chorus. I could even let it go again. 
I'm going to go back on time this time. Ready? Now, in this method, you have to click. Let me turn this down. You have to click it right on time. I don't think there's a way. I'll keep exploring. I don't think there's a way to hit it and have it um, go at the end of the previous loop. So you got to have your timing down. You got to click it right on a beat. But now I'm going to show you how you can go whenever you want to. So I'm talking to you guys. I'm going to go at the top of the loop. Ready? And it's going to end up on the C sharp. Uh, right there on the C minor. Hear that? Let's do it again. Ready? C sharp minor. Starts at the bottom. You see that? On the little orb. So what? Let me show you how it gets really creative. Look at that. I, I interrupted the chorus whenever I wanted to. So check this out. Ready? Sweet. Started over track one a bunch of times. Ready? That's cool. And ready? Let's just go to the chorus now. So far, pretty reliable. There was maybe a little flash right there, maybe because I was overloading it unnaturally. But let me show you a way to mix up the chorus. You know, the chorus, let me show you the chorus. The chorus normally goes C sharp minor to D, to B minor, to E. Let's say I want it to do C sharp minor to D, C sharp minor to D. I want to skip the other half. Watch this. Uh, let me come around. I'll be in more of a zone here. Let me, uh, Ready? See that right there? By starting over the chorus multiple times in a row, I was able to hang out on that whenever I went to. I just kept going back to the C-sharp minor. So that is really cool to me. All right, I'm going to hit my stop button. Um, so one um, thing to keep in mind here is uh, that when you stop it, if you hit the fifth button, let me go back to this view right here. If you hit the fifth button over there, I don't think things go well. Let me try that. Ready? It doesn't play the drums, but it doesn't bring it all back in. So I'm trying to think of how to bring it back in. Um, if I hit the all start, um, okay. The all start, all stop, I use it with my keyboard here. Let me try this one. Okay. So that's good. Uh, all start, all stop brings in the verse. It starts with the first um, two tracks, not the third. I'm not sure what the logic is, but that's probably a good thing. So let me again hit all start, all stop. And I'm going to go right here and see what happens. Everything's in time. I did that experiment because sometime earlier I started up track, uh, that track five, and I could have sworn like the drums, the percussion, and all that were not lined up. And I thought, uh oh, can you get back? Like if you had to stop everything and I don't know, help somebody or answer a question, could you come back to it? And, and the good news is all start, all stop does it. Okay, let's try this with a rhythm track. Um, I just realized I don't think I'll be able to demonstrate the full rhythm capability here because I've never put a rhythm, meaning a, a drum kit or something that's built into the 600, onto an actual track. I've never put it on track one that could be controlled with the volume returned on and off. I just use their uh, their manual stuff like this. Like I've got this control up here on my keyboard that lets me 
manage a click track or the drum beat, but it's just behind the tracks. It's not, you know, part of one through six. So I may need to come back to that. I usually use percussive acoustic, something like that. Or I got this, um, you know, garage band and I use my keyboard to control it like this, like this. Like that. So I usually record those right onto track myself and build them from scratch. Uh, so maybe I'll have to do something else where I take the boss looper. But the principle, I think, is the same, um, hopefully. So uh, now let's do the deep dive into the settings here. So if I uh, come in here, um, that is the start right track. And I'm going to, I'll leave my recordings there, but I'm going to, um, pretty go deep into the screen itself, and we're going to show every single setting on the 600 uh, in the settings. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to hit the menu button, which is on the top of the whole device, and that gets you from that screen to that screen. Those three don't really matter here. I'm going to go to the right one time, and I'm at control function. And I'm going to click control function once, and there are our three pedal modes. For now, um, I'm not going to explain any of this. That, I'm going to assume you know how the modes work. If I go to mode one, I'm in mode one. And if I go to pedal one, the, these are all, these are nine pedals. The Think of the actual buttons. These are not pedals. Uh, they, say, they say pedal, but they're the buttons on the top of your, of your uh, red, you know, Boss RC600. So if I click one, that is track one, record and play. So that was the, the percussive track. I'm gonna go hit exit to go up a level. I'm gonna go to two. That's track two, record and play. I've got um, play option four right there, record play option four, which gives me all that other stuff. And then um, hit escape and go to three. That is track three, record and play. And now here's where it gets a little bit different. I'm gonna go escape and now I'm gonna go to the fourth pedal. And that is all start, stop number one. Um, if I go escape again and go to the right and go to the fifth pedal, that's all start, stop, one, and uh, the same thing as number four. The rest of them in this line don't really matter because um, they're just, I mean, I have an all start, stop, for example, way over here on nine um, that I use to also clear stuff, but that's not the point of that. So I don't think any of this other stuff matters for the point of the video. Okay, so that is the control function. So if I hit escape a couple of times, I get back here to the assigns. And if I go to the assigns, I set it up pretty cleanly here. Assign number one is pedal four, mode one. Again, so when I'm in mode one and I hit the fourth pedal, it looks like that. And what it does is it plays track two. Um, it says play stop, but it really plays track two. And that's it. Okay. So then I'm going to go back out. I'm going to go to my second assign. That is... Same thing, fourth pedal of mode one, and then it plays track one, again, that percussion track. So in other words, uh, the fourth button plays track one. If I go back to that first assign, I'm in the first assign, it also plays track two, and the all start, all stop is what is where the magic comes in from Dino. All right, so let's go to the third assign. Third assign is pedal five. So this is exactly the same as the other setup. The fifth pedal on mode one plays track one. It turns on the percussion again. You want that percussion going on, or rhythm. And then um, if I go back out a level and go to the fourth assign, it's also pedal five. And there is track three, player stop. So it plays the chorus. So again, uh, the, uh, the fifth, let me see. It's the third assign is pedal five. That starts the rhythm, and again, the fourth assign, I'm going into fourth. The fourth assign is also pedal five, and it plays the chorus on track three. So that's it. I've got a bunch of other assigns here that control my keyboard, or that allow me my keyboard to control the 600 and other stuff, but that's not uh, the point of this video. All right, now over here in the loop settings, you get there by pressing the loop button on the top of the 600. Um, let me go into track one right there. I'm in track one. Uh, I don't think any of these have much to do with what I'm talking about here, but I'll just show them. Let you pause and rewind if you'd like to. 
Uh, again, I don't think those have a big or any effect on this demo, but here uh, they sort of do. The first track is multi, because I want it to just play all the time, the percussion track. Um, if you have one, um, I demonstrate that um, again on more on the second video, but um, you know, see what you think. The measure is set to free and loop sync is on. Um, again, this first track is really related to the second video. Um, and then on X fade normal. Um, I don't know what any of that means really. I never use it. And then there's that. And then there's that stuff. So let me come back over here. I'm going to hit exit and we're going to go to track two and same stuff. I think that's all the same. I think this is all the same. You can pause and rewind if you want to. And then if I go here. Um, oh, this is where it's a little bit different. Uh, loop sync is also on, but single, uh, the play mode is single right here. So that'll keep track two playing the verse without playing the chorus. You'll see in a second. And then that stuff's the same. And that stuff's the same. So let me go back here though. So back here, I'm going to switch to track three. Ready? All right. Track three, by the way, if you want to move from track two to three here in these settings things, just hit the loop button again. You don't have to exit back out and scroll around. You just hit the loop button. For example, if I hit loop, 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 loop. There. Track three is also on single and it's also on free. So those are the track settings. Now let me hit exit. I'm going to go back out. Let's see the record. So under here, this is a big one. Quantize is off. So you got to be pretty good and on time with all that stuff. Um, I don't think the rest of them apply to this video and that doesn't apply. Now let's look at the play settings. If I go to play, I don't know what string track change immediate uh, S track. I don't know. Um, but that is on immediate current track, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that matters. Maybe that first one does. Maybe that's a big deal. Um, in fact, let me go back. I would say if you're trying to do what I'm doing here, clone everything. All right, let me go forward one time. I don't think that applies. The loop length is auto. And here I'll say this, the speed change immediate and the sync adjust beat. I seriously don't quite know what they do, but I think it will help you if you clone this exactly again. All right, so that covers all of the settings that should work for you if you duplicate all of that and just play around with it. Um, you know, maybe trying to emulate the same kind of stuff I did. Uh, hopefully it'll work. If I left anything out or I made a mistake, let me know in the comments and leave, you know, a message uh, with what you'd like to see and hit like and subscribe and click the bell and all that because I'll do some more uh, boss content. I may not go into the super crazy deep stuff if it's, you know, more work than it is fun. But um, uh, another thing is, again, stick around for part two of the video. I'm going to do the Joker by Steve Miller Band and Us and Them from Pink Floyd, good examples of how to do verses and choruses with different lengths. It uses the same all start, all stop method as well. Um, but it has a couple other tricks that I think work, um, maybe not all the time. And I don't know that's going to work with the percussion because one of the loop syncs off is off. So anyway, you'll see that in part two. All right. Thanks for being here. Let me know what you think. Later.